Uh, welcome everybody uh, to a new uh, presentation in which we are going to have a look at another system uh, that displays the uh, 3D images, CBCT uh, 3D images. Uh, as you know now in the market there are several softwares uh, uh, it could either be uh, proprietary to the uh, x-ray machine itself so you view it only in the x-ray machine or there are softwares even you can find them online where you can uh, import uh, DICOM images that were taken in another machine and then you can just view them in the uh, 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 on those softwares and this is one of those examples as you can see here uh, this is an uh, uh, the MyPax 3D dental viewer it's a, it's a software by MyPax and it doesn't offer all the uh, uh, options that can be um, uh, seen in other machines like the one that we have seen in the other video videos if you want to you can refer to them the Sirona, Galileus uh, or Galaxy software anyway what we're going to do here is that we will have a, a, a general idea about the navigation of the different planes that, uh, that are seen in the uh, uh, comb beam CD. In this system you can see here that this is the axial view uh, I'll double click on it you can see that this is the axial view in the axial view you can view images from superior to uh, inferior uh, 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 dimension so of course as you know that the CB CT does not offer complete coverage as you can see here that I'm navigating now uh, in, a, a, in an a, a, a inferior uh, direction and I would, would I'm, I'm actually what I'm doing is that I'm uh, moving the uh, wheel uh, scroll wheel of the mouse I'm going now in an uh, inferior uh, sorry superior direction I just want to show you I'll double click again I just want to see I'm still here in the axial view I'm going uh, in, a, in a superior direction uh, where I will show you the maximum limit of the uh, uh, of the comb beam uh, you know that the comb beam all comb beam machines this is the largest field of view it doesn't actually give a full scale view what it does is that it has a limit as you can see here I'm I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm getting closer to the to the limit a maximum limit of the uh, coverage see see this line over here you can see it you can trace it on the other views now the image has completely disappeared so what you want what, what, what the the coverage actually is not a complete uh, maxillofacial coverage but it has a limit and this is determined by the uh, by the uh, collimator of the machine and the direction and the geometry of the machine okay so to uh, I'm scrolling here because we're scrolling here in a, 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 a slow uh, uh, you know slices are slow uh, but you can go faster I'll go here to the coronal view if you go to the coronal view see what happens now with the left click on the mouse I'm going to get into the uh, uh, okay now I'm in the in the center of the uh, uh, of the uh, image so again we have three planes the first plane is the axial view it's written over here the axial view the other one is the coronal view and this is where you see the image in a anterior posterior uh, dimension 
and the other uh, 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 slice of the uh, plane of the image is the sagittal plane and in the sagittal plane you're going to view the patient in a medial lateral direction so uh, superior inferior direction is the axial anterior posterior direction is the coronal and the medial lateral direction is the uh, sagittal view there is another view which is the 3D reformatted image actually it's a combination I'm going now with a left click as you can see I will just enlarge the image uh, I hope oh, this cannot be enlarged it doesn't offer this possibility now I'm viewing the patient from the front in a coronal view I can rotate the image so that I will uh, see the um, uh, patient from or the images of the patient from the side now I'm from the back and I can rotate the image uh, backwards so I am seeing the patient now from uh, uh, from the uh, uh, in a superior uh, inferior direction actually this view will help you and it doesn't exactly locate but at least it will show you the relationship in 3d uh, hopefully in 3d it is a reformatted image that uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, 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 it's constructed by the computer however if this is a 3d those images are never seen in 3d actually this is a 2d image uh, this is a 2d image the, uh, 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 and this is another 2d image the combination of 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 all those three is the 3d image but uh, basically they are 2d images uh, uh, that always lacks a um, uh, dimension the depth and it is completed in the other view okay uh, I will start usually uh, if uh, I will let me uh, uh, here I will go this is the hyoid bone if you can see it over here okay and uh, here is the as you can see it over here uh, this is the nasopharynx nasopharynx and this is the start of the trachea okay and then we will go down this is the uh, uh, we're going down into the criteria I don't want you to get involved or to be involved in this let us concentrate on the part which is most most relevant to us because we will have another session about the radiographic anatomy that is seen in the uh, in the 3d which is a bit complicated subject uh, but we will go through it we will see here if we want I want to see the uh, 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 condyle then I will try to navigate through the condyle from here I'll direct the beam and this is uh, this is the condyle from the top this is the condyle for in, a, in a coronal section see and this is the coron uh, this is the condyle in a, in a sagittal view these are the air cells which are present in the mastoid uh, process okay so uh, this image you can uh, in this in the coronal view you can see uh, okay in the coronal view you will you will uh, you will be able to see the uh, the let me just uh, decrease okay in the coronal view you can see that this is the condyle over here I will navigate in the in the through the condyle from its most posterior surface to the most anterior anterior surface this is the uh, right condyle of the patient mind you this is the right and this is the left and it tells you here these uh, uh, your section the date where the x-ray was taken and it tells you the width and the length and the number of pixels these are the number of the pixels and this is in a 10 millimeter uh, uh, area and this is the uh, field of view 14 by 7 uh, 14.7 by 28 uh, and this is again the time uh, and the date by which the x-ray is taken and these are the information which are which are related to the uh, to the patient okay so um, I'm navigating now uh, in the mo uh, uh, most anterior part of the 
uh, of the condyle. If you want, we can go to the uh, left condyle, and in the left condyle, again, we will see, uh, uh, we will navigate through the different depths of the condyle, from the, an anterior to a posterior view. If you go to the other side, which is, or the plane, which is the sagittal plane, in the sagittal plane, you are going to, again, navigate uh, naturally from the most medial <coughs> to the uh, most uh, lateral side of the condyle. See the side of the uh, shape of the condyle is different. I will just uh, move this away. Now what I have done here when I move this, I'll take you back to the other images. See when I moved the complete uh, section has moved. So you can here navigate and you can direct the beam. But just for purposes of uh, demonstration, I will just drag this, uh, the cursor, the uh, hairpin, uh, cross pin away, so that it w uh, I will show the uh, 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 condyle. Now I will magnify. See. I can magnify so that I will see the condyle and this is the external auditory meatus and this is the sigmoid notch and this is the coronoid process of the, man, uh, of the mandible. Okay, back again to the views, what we are seeing over here, this is the left condyle, see, where I have put and you can, uh, uh, and this is where we are in, in, in this direction. <coughs> We can see the sinuses. This is the left sinus. If you want to navigate through the sinus in a coronal section, then see with this. I'm scrolling now with this uh, with the with the screw uh, with the scroll pin. See what is happening. I'm going posteriorly. How do I know I'm going posteriorly? I will look at this uh, view. See, I'm going now to the most posterior part of the. Uh, of the uh, maxillary sinus. The maxillary sinus is gone. Uh, is uh, again, I'm going back in an anterior direction. You see, how do I know I'm in the in anterior direction? See, I will see the others. I will observe the uh, uh, cross pins where it is going. Now, I'm going in the most anterior part of the uh, of the patient. See? Most anterior part. So here, actually, I'm navigating in the sinus in a, a anterior posterior direction. Now, if I go to this view, okay, then when I'm, when I'm moving, see what is happening. I'll just put the uh, cross pin in the maximum diameter of the uh, sinus. Now when I'm going to move, see where I'm going. I'm going in a medial direction. When I was moving here, I was going in an anterior posterior direction, right? Now when I'm moving in this over here, I'm going now to the most medial part of the sinus. This is the inferior concha over here. <coughs> if I go back again, then I will be moving towards the mark maximum depth uh, at, at the uh, width of, uh, of the of the maxillary sinus, and then I will go anterior uh, in a in a buccal direction, buccal, 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 and then I'll go to the <coughs> most buccal side where it completely. Now I'm reaching the wall of the sinus, and now it is done. Okay. While, again, I'll go back in the axial view. In the axial view, you, as we would expect, if I scroll down, then I will be scrolling down in an superior, inferior direction. Now I have gone to the most uh, inferior part of the maxillary sinus. I started to go into the maxilla. I start to see the apices of the teeth. If I go back again, in the uh, uh, in the opposite direction, then I will be navigating into a superior inferior direction, and then I will go up, 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 up. As I will go here, I have crossed the maximum <coughs> dimension. Now, if you can see if there is any lesion within the sinus, then I will see it through the 
slices that I've, I've going, uh, I'm going there. Here I am in the frontal sinus, and if I go, if I go here, then I will be inside the uh, sphenoidal sinus. This is the sphenoidal sinus from the front, sphenoidal sinus from the top, and the sphenoidal <coughs> sinus from the uh, medial uh, direction. Now let me take you to the incisive foramen and the incisive canal. Now I'm in the exact center of the maxilla. This is the incisive foramen over here. <coughs> and this is uh, from a coronal uh, view. Okay? And this is from a sagittal view. Uh, if you want to see uh, a tooth, for instance the central incisor, the central incisor, now I'm in the, uh, uh, in the middle of the uh, central incisor. This is the crown of the tooth from the sagittal, uh, f uh, from a mesial direction, okay? And if I go here, this is the uh, 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 distal surface of the tooth. What I can do here, I can uh, measure and the measurement here is 23 uh, uh, or 24.46 which is the exact measurement I can uh, for instance measure the width uh, buccolingual width of the molar okay and then I can uh, I can simply delete I can export the, the image in a, either JPG or in a 3D uh, or in a DICOM format so I can uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, I can uh, send it to another colleague for uh, for for uh, measurement uh, or uh, for uh, uh, purposes of uh, of study. Okay.